Pehelwani, Kushti, Malayud and Dangal are words that conjure up the rough and tumble of the clay pits where wrestlers trained under the watchful eye of their gurus. The arts too seem to reflect a fascination with this world as we see this ancient tradition being depicted time and time again across the globe. But how has wrestling been represented in the arts through the ages? How do you think it has been used as a tool to explore society, politics and culture? In this episode of Museums Without Borders, we look at a Mewad miniature painting titled Maharana Sangram Singh II watching Jethi wrestlers at the City Palace Udaipur from the collection of City Palace Museum Udaipur and a set of jewelries and nulls from MAPS collection. These works invite us into the world of wrestling, providing insights into the rich history associated with it. Dating to the early 1700s, this painting is one of the oldest in the City Palace Museum's collection. The painting was commissioned by the Maharana, who like his predecessors was a patron of wrestling. The wrestling scene unfolds in the public courtyard of Manik Chowk. The creamish white facade of the palace is positioned upright against the blues of Lake Pichola, towering over an assembled audience. In the central frame, we see Maharana Sangram Singh II watching the match while seated with his nobles on a race pavilion under a canopy. A pair of JT wrestlers in nine successive stages of combat appear just below, bearing tiger claws or the bagnak in hand. The two are distinguishable by their different colored lung boats or lower garments. The fight is being refereed by an older wrestler named Pratap, who can be identified by his golden turban. Large crowds gather around the enclosure to enjoy the entertainment. The back of the painting details the names of important members of the king's court, as also a description of the scene. This makes me curious about the jories and nals from Maps collection. Were they used as weapons in wrestling matches? These jories and nulls from Maps collection originated in India centuries ago and are used by wrestlers for resistance training to further develop their strength and mobility. They are swung around in particular patterns and come in various weights, shapes and sizes. The jewelries are weighted clubs that are typically cylindrical with a knob at the top which enables wrestlers to control it, while the nulls are circular stone rings with sculpted handles in the middle. When it comes to wrestling in India, it is far more than a competitive sport. It is a complex way of life that helps define a person's identity. Traditionally, the gymnasium where the wrestler trains is known as the Akhada, the spatial and conceptual center of their life. Wrestling in the Akhada is predominantly a male-centered practice where they spend hours each day bathing, receiving oil massages, training and grappling in the soft earth in the midst of their gurus. Since there has been such a long history of the sport in the subcontinent, I wonder if there is a relationship between royal patronage and wrestling. In fact, yes. In the courts, wrestling served as a means of entertainment while simultaneously being a symbol of the political strength possessed by the king. These matches were conducted indoors, in public courtyards of the palace, or on the outskirts in akhadas or chogans or large grounds. Here, it's interesting to see that tussles between animals of the same species, such as elephants, horses, and roosters, were also organized, sometimes alongside the JT wrestling matches. In the case of this miniature, the careful placement of the JTs, skillfully illustrated with great finesse by perhaps the lead artist of the court, points to the patronage awarded to the sport. In addition to this, the Bahiras of the Daily Diaries maintained at court record that these events were often organized on the occasion of a birth anniversary of a king, queen or an important official. All players received a monthly salary and occasional monetary rewards, land grants, 
or gifts like headgear and weapons. Speaking of royal patronage, is there any relationship shared between physical prowess and political power in the context of wrestling? The juries and nulls from Maps Collection provide an interesting contrast to the miniature from the City Palace Museum Udaipur, juxtaposing the physicality of the sport with the political symbolism associated with it. Wonder how? I came across a popular story from the court of Baroda, where Maharaja Khande Rao challenged Ramju Pehlwan, an undefeated wrestler, to a match, only to be eventually defeated. In courts where wrestling was a revered sport, kings were typically as skilled as many of the wrestlers. Here, the contest is a metaphor for the struggle between royal patronage and a wrestler's identity. The king himself recognized Ramju as an accomplished wrestler, setting up the contest between physical and political strength. Within modern-day society, wrestling offers an analogy to the way politicians construct a reality to produce changes in public opinion. Speaking of modern-day society, how has the sport evolved and changed? From its ancient origins as a combat sport to its modern-day form as a highly organized profession, wrestling has undergone a remarkable evolution over the years. Bringing these two works together allows us to uncover the histories of wrestling through the constant social, political and cultural shifts that were taking place. They reveal the story of a sport that gradually embedded itself within the social fabric of the time and was used not just for entertainment but also as a symbol of power and political leverage. A story that has been of constant fascination to artists and image makers. Thank you.